morning, y'all. Since it is June, I've had a lot of comments about this. This is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Do y'all realize that? <laughs> I'm gonna start with my complete disaster right here. I woke up at 5 a.m. We got back from a baseball tournament at midnight. I woke up at 5 a.m. to find the entire downstairs of my house flooded. It did not come from an appliance. It came from a pipe burst underneath the house. Worst case scenario. It is now gonna take months to find, fix, and repair including ripping out all the hardwood on the first floor of our house to get this back in shape. We've got a big restoration company and a team of guys right there working around the clock, ripping up stuff. They got supersized wet vacs, uh, just running nonstop. But here's the deal. God is good. I ain't slept at all. I'm mad. Uh, our house is a disaster, but God is good. It's not a family member. It's not a health crisis. It's just a pipe, y'all, and a pipe can be fixed. Every man is going through a lot of stuff. And I feel like this is something we need to talk about. On a channel this size, I know that every man listening has got probably a hundred different things that keep him up at night. And the world definitely rushes to make sure all of our women are doing okay, but nobody asks, hey, is dad all right? Is he all right? Now, this is where I discovered the power of a damn good cigar. Stay with me now. I did not say cigarettes, but the occasional cigar. Some people might say, you know, buddy, that ain't you know, really good for your health. And they might be right. But I'll tell you what ain't good for your health. Never having fellowship with a group of guys you trust, never building relationships, and living your damn life completely lonely as hell. That ain't good for your health. Talking this stuff out, bouncing dreams and ideas off of each other and a group of guys that you actually trust. I thank God that I have a wife who understands the desperate need for me to get around my buddies and, uh, and do this kind of stuff. Because every time I do, what I notice is I walk away so happy. And I can't wait till the next time we all get together and, you know, get a chance to do this. I feel like I would get more from this type of sitting than 20 therapist visits, to be honest with you. And when my wife wants to go out to dinner with the girls, she doesn't ask me permission. Just like I'm not going to ask permission, can I go smoke a cigar and have drinks with the boys? We just do it. We understand the fact that a husband and wife cannot fill every single void in each other's lives. We need a support group and we need uh, people in our lives. And look, I... If you want to go out with the girls to dinner, uh, I don't, I'm just glad I don't have to hear that girl talk anyway. I mean, y'all go have at it. Have a big old time. I'm going to order pizza and watch Rambo movies with my two boys. Now, y'all buckle in. This is the most important part right here. I've got friends that are multimillionaires. I've got friends that are 40 years old and still struggling to pay the rent. I've got friends that are back from Afghanistan and mentally screwed to hell. I've got friends that are celebrities and friends that are making 22 grand a year pull a night shift somewhere just trying to keep their stuff together. I orchestrate us all getting together and sitting at my shop in the woods, in private, a few times a year, and lives have changed there, but I've gotta be the one to do it. This is the most important part, y'all, because men suck at picking up the phone and arranging stuff like this, but I promise y'all, you have fellas in your life right now, probably half a dozen guys that would love to get a text from you right now, but they're never gonna pick up the phone. They're never gonna orchestrate it if you don't. Now people laugh at those old Vietnam vets sitting around the co-op in the John Deere parts department on Saturday mornings with a cup of coffee and they talk for a couple hours. We make fun of those guys. And I don't know why the hell um, anyone in society would ever do that. They went through more hell in the jungle than most of us could ever comprehend and they're still awake some nights, 75 years old with flashbacks. But you know how they deal with it? Because someone made the damn decision to acknowledge that they need each other. Isolation doesn't work, and you know this, but iron sharpens iron, just as one man sharpens another, Proverbs 27, 17. So let's go back to what works. To my fellows out there, I wanna tell y'all, let's take a cue from our granddads and pull the Band of Brothers back together again. God bless y'all.